In this video, I'm going to show you a breakdown of how I created this geometric tiles material using Substance Designer. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Real quick before we get into this breakdown, I just want to say thank you guys for all the support on my most recent video. It's done really well for my channel. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's a tutorial on lighting and rendering in Marmoset Toolbag. So if you're interested at all in that, I will link it in the top right of the screen now, as well as at the end of this video. So if you're interested in that, definitely check it out. But anyway, that's enough of that. Let's get into the breakdown. So the first step is to get this triangular pattern going, these alternating triangles. So in order to do that, I used a Polygon 2 node with obviously three sides and then a 0 0.05 gradient to give a little bit of fall off there on the edges of the triangle. And then I'm running the triangle through two different transformation nodes. The top one here is just stretching the triangle so it fills the whole square. And the bottom one is the same thing, but reversed. Now both of the transformation nodes then go through tile samplers. So we have this one and this one. Now these both have 16 by 16 on the X and Y amount. And then down here at the bottom, we have color random turned up to 0.48 just to give some variation in the shading of the triangles. So that way when we blend these together, we will have a full grid of randomly shaded triangles. The next thing I do is run it through a levels node to darken everything to make it a bit less intense. And then if I zoom in here, you can see the divisions between the triangles aren't consistent and they're also really, really thin. So to fix that, I took our same Polygon 2 node from before, but this time I turned on Invert Gradient and that just gives us our outline. Then it's running through the same two transformation nodes again and then running through tile samplers again. But this time the tile samplers don't have any color random. So it just gives us a white lines and then when we blend those together, it kind of thickens up those divisions a little bit. And then they are blended on top of this levels node in subtract mode. And you can see the difference here. The triangles are much more separated. So now we have our basic height information for all of the flat white triangles. Now we need to get this height information for these raised detail triangles. And the way I did that is again, using our same polygon two node, but with the gradient turned all the way up, it's then running through the same two transformation nodes. And then our two transformation nodes are now running into three different tile samplers. And in the tile samplers, I have the mask random set to different values to give us three different masked out areas for raised triangles. So the top one, we have the mask inverted at 0 0.05. The second one, is non-inverted at 0.93 and the third one is not inverted at 0.95 so then we're blending these two nodes together here and then blending that with the third one to give us all of our detailed triangles or the raised up triangles so now i need to get the detail for these more detailed triangles right here and the way i did this was using our same polygon 2 again set to a one gradient, running through two transformation nodes, one that just fills out the square, and then a smaller triangle that we then subtract from the larger shape to give the cutout in the middle. Next, we run that blend through another transformation node to get the flipped version, and then we're using our same tile samplers as on the raised tiles, but with different mask random values. So on the top one, it's inverted at 0 0.02. The second one is not inverted at 0.98. And then the third one is not inverted also at 0.98. So then we blend the top two together here, blend in the third one here. And then this is actually being output to two different nodes. The first thing is this levels node to create a black and white mask just by dragging this all the way over to the left here. And then the second thing is it's fed into the blend node that's blending on top of our other raised triangles. And then this levels node is acting as our mask here for this blend. So now all of our detail triangles are blended together. 
Then I ran it through a levels to darken everything up a little bit and then blended it on top of our base triangle height information. And that gives us our final height information, which is being output to our height output, a normal node, which is then fed into our normal output, and then also an ambient occlusion node, which we will get to a little bit later. So now let's look at the color map. So my base color is just a light gray, and it's running into this blend node that is having the triangle colors blended on top. So to get the colors for the triangles, I use our same Polygon 2 node, and it's running through the same transformation nodes and the same tile sampler nodes that we've been using the whole time. And these tile sampler nodes are actually the same exact nodes. I copy and pasted them from the raised tiles. That way we have the same mask on there. So then the tile sampler node goes into a blend and it's actually going in as the mask with the background being black and the foreground being whatever color you want. So my bottom one is blue, middle one is red, top one is gold. Then we blend our top two colors here, blend it again to add the third color in, and then it blends on top of our base color using this levels node as a mask, which I skipped before, but it's the same thing as this levels node where I just took our blend of all of the raised triangles and created a black and white mask by dragging this all the way to the left. And that acts as our mask for our color here. Then we add in our ambient occlusion here, and that is it for our base color. So now all that's left is metallic and roughness. So metallic is a black uniform color because this is not a metal material, so that's super simple. And then our roughness map is also pretty simple. I'm using a dark gray as the background, and then I'm blending on top of it a black kind of sparkly material. And the way I got that was using a white noise, using a transformation node to make it a little bit more dense, and then a levels node to darken everything up, and then it just blends right on top of our uniform color using this levels node again as the mask. And that's our final roughness map. So I hope you found the breakdown helpful. If you did, drop a like. And if you want to see future videos from me, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you made it this far, there's a link in the description where you can download this material for free on my Gumroad page. So if you're interested, definitely check that out. And I'll see you guys next time.